thank goodness. There you are. Those Numo were rather frightening. I'm glad you're safe. I haven't seen much actual combat, so I was a little nervous, but I'm happy I could help. The Minfilius before me battled Sin Eaters as part of the Yulmoran army. But that had all changed by the time I was found. They held me captive, so that I wouldn't follow in the others' footsteps. I'd still be in my cell now had Thancred not spirited me away. When he found me, I knew nothing of the world. I didn't know how to live, let alone fight. Thancred once told me that if the efforts to summon you failed, it would fall to me to face the Light Wardens. I realized then that it was the only reason he kept me close, as a contingency. The truth is, he can't stand to be around me. Because I'm not her. I'm not his Minfilia. <sighs> Once, we journeyed to Nabatharang together. To the place where the Oracle appeared and stayed the Flood. As we drew near, I felt as though I was fading away. I shut my eyes and covered my ears and then... And then... Uh, I'm not sure what happened after that. I have a vague feeling that I said something to him. Only it wasn't me at all. It was her. Afterwards, Thancred didn't say a word. Only kept to himself and brooded. There's nothing I can do for him, nothing I can offer but my presence, though it only reminds him of his loss. She should be the one to live on. That's why I tried to find you, because I knew that was what she wanted. But now that you're here, I'm not entirely sure what it was she intended me to do. Something or, or bring you to someone or somewhere. I can feel the answer at the edge of my mind, just out of reach. Ah, what? What is that? Why? Why did you imprison us? Such boredom, such tedium have we suffered. It is unfair. Unfair. Play with us. It came from the castle. This is everything I have. Please see it delivered to the Numo. I will bear word to Thancred and the others. Ah! My medallion! 
You found it! Oh, I know not how to thank you. It is my most treasured possession. A gift from a dear departed soul. He was a traveler, and together we journeyed to the ends of the world and back again. <laughs> when I was young. In those days, I could not speak. But we found joy in each other's company nonetheless. Oh, the memories. This medallion he found during an adventure. Fashioned it into a necklace for me, his partner in crime. I had not the words to tell him then. But it filled my heart with pride. I was so, so happy. His name was Artbert, and he was my friend. Artbert, thou sayest. Everyone blamed him for the Flood. Him and his comrades. Some few spoke up for them, of the many whose lives they had touched. But as the years went by, their voices were drowned out by those who only uttered the adventurers' names as a curse. It was too much to bear. And so I left behind men and their lies, and came to this place. Artbert was a trusting soul, constantly being drawn into the troubles of others. Yet in spite of this, he never thought twice when he saw someone in need. He always tried to help. It was no different then. The world needed heroes. It needed him. And yet... Uh, he was a good man. He deserved to be happy. I wish I could have told him that, at least. You remind me of him, your kindness. When we Amaro were created, we were granted the ability to perceive souls. Thus did we recognize our masters. That ability has long since faded from our kind. But due perhaps to my reversion, I can see your soul. Faintly, but surely. It is reminiscent of Artbirds. <laughs> Strikingly so. Of course, you are you and no one else. We are defined not by the soul we are born with, but the path we walk. Nevertheless, I cannot help but feel that this is more than mere coincidence. Which is why I will place my faith in you. The relic. It is yours. Something happened at Lida Loran. Together with the twins, we were playing tricks on some nasty mortals to stop them from setting foot in Il Meg. At first they ran off screaming, which was lots of fun. But 
But then a scary, bony, wrinkly old mortal came along and spoiled everything. None of our tricks seemed to work on him, which is no fun at all. And now they're getting closer and closer. Ranjit. If he manages to find his way in, all our efforts will have been for naught. Hmm, as thou sayest. Should we be discovered ere our mission here is complete and the Light Warden yet liveth, our task will be rendered nigh impossible. If we are to prevail, we must needs divide our forces. Thus do I propose the following. Whilst thou salliest forth to meet with the Light Warden, we shall join in the effort to obstruct the trespasses. Should we succeed in staying their advance, all the better. Yet even should we fail, if we can but delay our enemy's arrival long enough for thee to secure victory, our plan may still be deemed a success. So the moment the lights go out, we all beat a hasty retreat, yes? Let me come with you. I have the blessing too. No, Minfelia. You'll only get on the foot. Now come. I wish there were more I could do. Please be careful.
You have freed our fallen king. Not that I expected any less, my Snayak. The dress, the crown, the scepter, the shoes. The time has come for these relics to serve their true purpose. For they are not only keys to the castle, they are also blessings to be bestowed upon the new king. The way into the castle is opened when it is time to relieve the reigning monarch of the throne. And the brave soul who does the deed has the honor of taking their place. However, should you ascend the throne, you will become one of us. Never again to live as men do. My adorable sapling, my precious mortal. We fey folk live forever, but such is not your virtue. To strive for a dream you will never see. To sow seeds that others might one day taste the fruits of your garden. That is the beauty of your kind. Burn bright and shine as only you can. These blessings your lovely branch will accept in your stead. Now, shall we attend to those unwise enough to trespass in our realm? Confound it! How did they get here so fast? <laughs> Damn these pixies and their tricks! <laughs> How in the seven hells? Listen well! We come in pursuit of villains who have fled to this land. You know who and where they are. Now show yourselves and answer me before I lose my patience. Oh, stop it! Hurts! It hurts! Enough! Lift the enchantment! Minfilia! Willful child! How many times must I come to collect you? I won't return to your moor. And I won't let you hurt my friends. What is this stance? Where did you learn it? No oracle I trained would make such an unseemly show of herself. No, your shame, girl. You're powerless. You have no life nor purpose save that which our master sees fit to permit. Oh! 
Who are you to dictate her purpose? To lock her away and deny her a life? If she was powerless, it's because of you, you sanctimonious swine. But no longer. Fool! Defiance only begets more suffering. It is through acceptance alone that one may find solace in this God's forsaken world. Look! The sky! She's done it. The warrior of darkness has triumphed. General? What are our orders? What do we do? We do what we came to do. Subdue this rabble and find the warrior of darkness. Forward, men! Take the villains captive! Are you deaf? I said... Axla Orwain! Axla Orwain! What? What's happening? Water? That wasn't there before! What's the matter with you? Get a hold of yourselves, damn it! General, they come in greater numbers. We must retreat! All who stand with a warrior of darkness shall face justice. My master demands it. I see. Well, it's a good thing Fea all volunteered to become king in your stead, for all our sakes. We are grateful for your timely aid, Fea all, or should I say, your majesty. It was the first night in recent memory. We all of us but wish to make the most of it. That's something you must remember about us Fey folk. Though our existence may be eternal, we exist only for the present. We live in the here and now, paying no mind to futures that may or may not be. To wit, we are not driven as men are. We cannot fight for such causes as men do. Does that mean you won't aid us against the Sin Eaters? <laughs> not unless the mood takes us. But if it was to repay a debt, well then, that's another matter. 
To take back as much as is taken. To create as much as is destroyed. To give as much as is received. Such is the way of Ilmeg. By this law, we shall lend you our strength. In return for the beautiful sky you have restored to us. In times of need, do not hesitate to call. Silly sapling, I shall remain at your side. Even should my body be in the castle, tis a simple thing to have a little part of me accompany you. Treat them as you would their Isnefis. All seems well at the Crystarium. Yes. Yulmore was plainly more concerned with finding us. How flattering. You certainly took your time. I had half resolved to complete the task myself. And you are... Were well, one to study the annals of Galian history, one would find yonder visage on many a page. Though by rights, its youth should long since have faded. Well, well, we have a historian in our midst. That spares me a lengthy explanation. I am Solus Sos Galvus, founding father of the Galian Empire, and under various guises, the architect of myriad other imperially inclined nations. As for my true identity... I am Emmet Selk, Asian. spoke of you, a native of the source. Equal in rank to La Habrea. And you came all this way just to introduce yourself to us? Behold the sky, restored to its former glory. Have you ever seen a more affecting spectacle? Oh, it is truly, deeply... ...infuriating. Do you have any idea how much you have delayed the rejoining? Following the Flood, the first had been listing ever further towards the Light, towards Stasis. The end was in sight. Enter man and his indomitable spirit. He would haul the world back from the brink. And adding his lump and weight to the power of growth, he duly tipped the scales, if only by a fraction. Yet a fraction was enough to spoil the perfect imbalance needed to bring about a rejoining! 
had mankind continued to live in idleness under Vorthry's rule, all the conditions would have been met. But you had to come and ruin it all! Thanks to your meddling, light supremacy is in doubt, and our painstakingly laid plans are in tatters! Well, I should begin by thanking you for confirming Uriange's theories on the inner workings of the Calamity. He will be most pleased. As for what happens next, might I suggest you admit defeat and walk away? Happy to let me go, are you? Because the murderous glint in your eye suggests otherwise. Indeed, it is enough to make me think better of confronting you alone. Look, it did cross my mind to simply side with Vorthry and kill you all. But that's no different from what Lerhebre did. And we all know how well that ended for him. And so, while it is liable to be troublesome, I have settled upon a different approach. Cooperation. I will not raise a hand to hinder your hunt for the Light Wardens. If you desire it, I will even lend you my knowledge and strength. Since time immemorial, you and yours have labored to rejoin the Thirteen Shards, at the cost of countless lives. Do you expect us to believe that your objective has suddenly changed? Nay, our objective is the same as it ever was. Though I dare say, you do not know our motive. A war waged without knowledge of the enemy is no war. It is mere bloodletting. Just once, might we not seek to find common ground? For good or ill, I am immortal. Provided I have the inclination, I can always begin anew, scheme and conspire to my heart's content. But this time I thought that I might instead try to see eye to eye, to understand what drives the hero of the source, to determine if our goals are truly incompatible. So come, shed your preconceptions. See beyond the unscrupulous villains you take us for. When all is said and done, we may find ourselves pleasantly surprised. The proud discoverers of a path of cooperation rather than opposition. Think of it. Thou hast delivered thy proposal, and we would not dismiss it outright. If I may offer thee counsel, however, to make thy case via an illusion reflecteth poorly upon thy sincerity. My apologies. You will forgive me if I'm not entirely at ease in the presence of a famed Assian Slayer. I felt it only prudent to take precautions. Nonetheless, your counsel is duly noted. I take my leave, friends. Rest assured, we shall meet again soon.
From the Exarch, is it? Uh, with that mirror of his, he can watch your every move, you know. You probably think you're talking to yourself. Still, he's keeping you well fed. Judging by his people's faith in him, he seems to be a decent sort. But so much about him remains shrouded in mystery. Like what was he doing back in my day? There was no such person when I was around. A lot's happened since the Flood, though. Since I was... set adrift. I know little more than you do of this city's history in the Exarch's past. Not that it matters. It's Emmett Selk we should be concerned about. When our world was about to be consumed by light, the Asin in white appeared before us. He said that the only way for us to live on was to bring about the rejoining. Desperate as we were, we heeded his words, not realizing that the flood was of the Asian's own making. They cannot be trusted, none of them. But Emmett Selk had one thing right. One should not fight blindly. That's what we did, and it cost us everything we held dear. You mean Seto? Well, that's... Guy. I suppose you're right. He's done some growing. When we were traveling together, he was nowhere near as big. And he obviously couldn't speak. I had no idea how much that medallion meant to him. What about you, anyway? You must have a friend like Seto. Chocobo, perhaps? Come on, you tell me something for a change. <laughs> 